Oh, I don't know how in the world I'm going to get to sleep tonight after everything that's happened today. <laughs> yeah, it was an exciting day. Now, I don't know what was more exciting, the trial or the party this afternoon. <laughs> now, let me get that. I'm expecting a call from the client. Late? Yeah, hello. Draper, it's Logan. I hope I didn't get you out of bed. Logan? No, uh, but if he had waited ten more minutes. <laughs> well, I'm sorry to bother you at this hour, but you did ask me to call any time when I got news of the trial. You got news? What is it? What's, what's happening? Well, I found a message when I got home this evening. Judge Lewis has reached the decision he wants all the principals in court tomorrow morning, 10.30. Hmm. Now, that was fast. I mean, that must be a record for Lewis. He likes to chew these things over forever. I just did this one in a hurry. I just wish I knew whether that was good or bad for our side. Look, let's not prejudge it. Let's just wait till tomorrow morning. Absolutely. Get a good night's sleep, show up in court in the morning. Might even do that once I get all the rosebuds on the wallpaper counted. Look, I uh, think you should get a good night's sleep. Because in the coming weeks, I think you're going to be up all night taking care of your baby. Well, from your mouth to God's ear. I want to apologize again for Raven this afternoon, the way she spoiled our party. Look, um, she didn't bother me at all. Don't worry about it. Um, Nelson, take her home? Yeah, that's right. I'm surprised she let him do that. I don't think she was in any mood to resist. I think it's just possible that this is the first time in her life that she didn't get her own way. They're not going to take you away from me, baby. Nobody is going to take you anywhere. Because if they try, I'm just going to take you away first. ready to fall into a nice long sleep, weren't you, you little brat? Hello. Uh, Mrs. Swift, Jason Rutledge. Sorry to call you so late. Yes, it is very late. What do you want? Well, I tried to reach you earlier, but your sitter said you weren't home. Well, of course I wasn't home or there wouldn't be a sitter, would there? Pardon me? Never mind. Look, it's just very late. Oh, oh, what, what can I do for you? Well, you see, it's very important. We're due in court tomorrow morning at 10.30. Why? The decision. The judge is ready to hand it down. Well, I thought you said that wasn't supposed to happen for a few days. Well, I honestly thought it wouldn't be, but apparently Judge Lewis is ready to uh, make the decision right now. Is that good or bad? Never mind. I already know the answer. It's bad, isn't it? We're going to lose. Well, now, I wouldn't say that. You heard the judge's opening remarks about how it's customary for the mother of the child to be Unless she can prove to be unfit. And with that letter in the court, we don't stand a chance. I still think there's a fair chance of the decision going our way. In any case, we got to be there. Shall I pick you up? No. I know the way to the courtroom. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Yes, hello. I would like some flight information, please. Do you have a flight leaving tomorrow afternoon for London? Good. The name is Swift. Raven Swift. Better safe than sorry. Better safe than sorry than dead. That was a mistake. I should not have told Raven my theory. Yeah, you're right. I shot off my big mouth again, didn't I? Why would I go warn Raven? She could do anything now. She could skip the town. She could skip the country. I mean, she could even... Oh, no. 
she wouldn't do that. No. She had to kill Elliot Dorn because he found the letter and was blackmailing her. And, you know, he would take her kid away from her. What could I do to hurt her? Yeah. What could I do to her? I'll tell you what I could do to her. I could get her arrested. I could send her to prison for murder. Oh, Raven wouldn't like that. Not one bit. Starting awfully early today, aren't we? Yes, Ellen. She is, is she? We'll send her in. I've got a feeling if this coffee doesn't wake me up, you're going to. Good morning, Derek. I trust you slept well. You went up and about so early today. I have to be in the courtroom in an hour. The judge is going to tell me today whether I get my little baby back or not. Good luck. I was hoping you could go with me. I'm sorry, my schedule makes that impossible. And besides, what could I possibly do? You could support me. You don't know what it's like in that courtroom. Nobody there cares about me. I'm sorry you feel that way. The fools are acting like I committed some kind of a crime. This whole town is against me. You know, Raven, if you spent as much effort trying to make friends as you do alienating people, you might have quite a fan club. Oh, you think so? Well, no one in this town understands me. As a matter of fact, I might as well buy a one-way ticket somewhere. And everyone would stand in line to help me pack my bags. Feeling sorry for yourself isn't going to solve anything. <laughs> oh, really? Would you miss me? Yes. Yes, I would. Well, I'm flattered. You'd be the only one. Maybe we can uh, become pen pals. Running away never solved anything either. Maybe I have somewhere to run to. Leaving Monticello would be tantamount to an admission of guilt, just letting everybody know that what they think about you is really true. Who cares? Because none of it matters. Well, in my book, only a criminal runs away. Well, Cliff Nelson already thinks I'm a criminal. As a matter of fact, I'm really surprised that he and Deborah Saxon are not here right now, trying to figure out a way to send me to prison. Or have they figured it out already? No, I haven't seen Nelson recently, and Deborah's not due in yet. Mm, I haven't been that lucky. Although I tell you, I'm considering setting up a meeting with Nelson. I'd like to hear him put enough words together so as to give me a reasonable explanation for his unauthorized visit to the unicorn. Cliff Nelson has a very, very bad habit of poking his nose where it doesn't belong. Yeah. It's bad enough that a private citizen would commit an act like that. But you'd think if anybody would know better, a lawyer certainly would. You know, Derek, everything is done with. So why don't uh, you just save yourself the aggravation and drop the whole thing? No. No, I'm not going to drop it. He committed an unlawful act. Come on, why don't you just forget about it? Don't see him. When you came in here, you were real upset about what he did. Now that I try to do something, you want me to drop it? I just don't want to provoke him, all right? Provoke him into what? Cliff Nelson is a clown who by some fluke managed to get a law degree. Now, if you make trouble with him, then he's going to try to get even. Why are you so scared of Nelson? I am not scared of Cliff Nelson. If you make trouble for him about his break-in, then he's going to tell everybody about my break-in, if you that's what you want to call it. You a key of your own. You had more right to be there than he did. All right, you know that and I know that, but Cliff Nelson is going to omit that little detail and make me look like a crook. All right. All right, I don't suppose anything would be gained hollering at Nelson. I'll, I'll drop it. Good. I think that would be the sensible thing to do. All right, with all of this out of the way, are you still concerned about Nelson? Yes. Because he has a very big mouth. Is he been saying things against you? Cliff Nelson would love to defame my character, if only to get into Deborah Saxon's good graces. Nobody is going to do anything to you. Well, then why don't you come to the courtroom and see for yourself? Because in an hour I have to meet with the commissioner, and before that I got a meeting with Miles Cavanaugh. Well, Derek, if you were there, he wouldn't dare say anything about me. I'm sorry, Raven. It just cannot be done. Yes, I know, I know. You're a busy man. All right. Then I won't take any more of your precious time. I'm sure everything is going to work out all right. Yes, it will. Because I'll just have to fend for myself as usual. I don't know about you guys, but my stomach's a nuts. 
You won't be long now. I'd like to get it over with, that's all. I think I'm going to have to hold on to the table while Judge Lewis is reading his decision to keep my hands from shaking. You know? Logan, everything is going to be fine. You just wait and see. Logan, the chances of our winning the case are excellent. Thanks to Carr, Scott, and Nelson, I had quite a team of lawyers backing me up. You deserve custody of the child. All Mike and Cliff had to do was point that out to the judge. Cliff, Mike, I want to thank you for all you've done. No matter how the judge decides to resolve this, I know that you did everything under the sun to help me, and I'm going to be grateful eternally. Well, I certainly hope you can bear with the decision, regardless of how it goes. I've had my day in court. I don't have much choice. You've had a lot of wonderful people in your corner doing this whole thing. Yeah. It's I've just been awfully lucky to have people like you to rely on. Just hang tough, Swift. Oh, look what the ill wind just blew in. All rise. The family court of the county of Monticello is now in session. The Honorable Aaron C. Lewis presiding. Be seated. The decision for custody is very difficult at best. So many issues have to be taken into consideration that are not black and white, but are subtle shades of gray. Ordinarily, it's not a question of determining that one parent is good for the child and that the other is bad, but which parent will put forth the better example? Which will be the better provider, protector, teacher? Who can and will provide the necessary ingredients that will afford the child the opportunity to develop in a happy and healthy environment. Now, I want to assure both parties that I've entered into this matter with an open mind and have studied each and every piece of evidence that has been brought before this court most carefully. And it has become clear that there are distinct differences that exist between the two parties pertaining to their desires and their motivations for custody, as well as their willingness and their ability to assume responsibility for the welfare and future happiness of the child in question. More often than not, the mother is presumed to be the party best qualified to serve as a single parent. Mrs. Swift presented herself before this bench as a loving and a devoted mother, a woman willing to go to great lengths for the sake of motherly love. I must confess that I was very moved by her testimony. It was becoming increasingly difficult for me to go against a long-standing precedent. Until that most heralded letter appeared before this court. Mrs. Swift's willful and shameful attempt to deceive this court renders the previously mentioned precedent invalid. It appears quite obvious that Mrs. Swift does not have the welfare of her son at heart. At the same time, Mr. Swift has impressed the court that in his care, Jameson Swift will never lack for the love and attention he needs and deserves. And based on that conviction, I hereby award custody of Jameson Swift to the father. <coughs> Courts adjourn. All rise. I simply can't believe it. My little boy is coming home. Watch that stuff. Our little boy. <laughs> I'm sorry. My grandmotherly pride has overwhelmed my good sense. Well, you're forgiven this once. And speaking of good sense, I just thought of something. What? We're not ready for him to come home yet. The crib has been in storage so long, it's probably got mold on it. Oh, for heaven's sake, stop fretting. All that's been taken care of. What? Right after Judge Lewis handed down his decision, I called Bennett's and ordered everything Jamie could possibly need. Well, maybe a little more than he actually needs, but then why take a chance? Oh, you didn't. I can't tell you what pleasure it gave me to make that phone call. I put everything on special delivery, and it's being delivered here this morning. You know what you are? You're superwoman, Nancy. You probably got a big red S on your chest. <laughs> Super grandma will do. But now, please, let's get down to business. It's time to make that phone call to Raven. Yeah, I better let her know I'm on my way over. You know, I don't even know what Jamie eats anymore. Oh, let me worry about that, will you? And tomorrow we'll make an appointment with this pediatrician. That's a good idea. I'm going to do everything I can to make this transition as easy and smooth as possible, Logan. You're fantastic. You want to get married? Hello? Hello, Raven, this is Logan. Yes, I knew you'd call this morning. You want to make some gloating remark, right? No, I'm not interested in gloating, just Jamie. I want to come by and pick him up. What's the hurry? I didn't think you'd want him on your hands any longer than necessary, so I thought I'd come by and get him. Well, no. Um, 
Logan, look, he's a mess. I have to feed him, I have to bathe him, I have to clothe him. He won't be ready for at least two hours. All right, I'll be there in exactly two hours. All right, I'll tell him to expect you. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, I guess I'll go by the office and clear up my schedule for this afternoon, then I'll pick up Jamie. Raven says she needs a couple of more hours. Oh, really? And in exactly one hour, Jamie, you and I are going to be on our way to the airport. And then we're going to go to England. Would you like that? Yes, we'll go to England. Isn't that fun? Now, don't fuss because you and I are going to get in a taxi cab and we're going to go to London to visit the Queen. Maybe if everything works out all right. I'll be the queen and I can buy Buckingham Palace and we can live there. Would you like that? You would. Hmm. I told the taxi driver to call on the intercom. Hello, Raven. I hope you don't mind if I come in. What are you doing here? Well, I see you're all prepared. I assume these are Jane's things. Yes, I told Logan that he would be ready in an hour or two. And I see you've packed his things in your best luggage. That's all I have is my best luggage. And don't worry, I expect Logan to return it. Yes, of course. Well, I must say, you look very well. Well, thank you. I didn't think I should be a bad sport. What I want to know is, why are you here? I thought I could be of some help to Logan, to both of you, for that matter. I thought I'd be able to make the transition a little bit easier for all of you. Exactly how? By finding out what Jamie is eating these days, about his schedule, his routine, his clothing, and so on. Look, I thought Logan got custody, not you. Logan is bound to be a bit confused for a time. After all... He hasn't been around his son for a good many months, as you well know. So he sent you for a crash course in baby care. My dear, you are the last instructor I'd seek in that subject. And no, Logan did not send me. He doesn't know a thing about it. He's at his office. Yes? Mrs. Swift? Yes. Taxi's here. I'll be waiting downstairs for in you. In a little while. Look, will you please leave now? I, I have about a million things to do. Raven, I see no reason why you should adopt this kind of negative attitude. Not now. Will you get out of here? I do not want you in my house. Haven't I made that clear? What's happening here? All this luggage. Surely Jamie doesn't have this much clothing. Raven, these are your things. Of course they are. I'm going on a trip. Just as soon as Logan gets Jamie, I need a rest. Now, what's so strange about that? I don't know. There's a taxi waiting out there. You were planning to leave. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Where in heaven's name do you think you're going? For your sake, I hope you're not planning to do anything illegal like trying to kidnap Jamie a second Are time. Are you crazy? I wouldn't do that. I don't want to go to jail. The taxi is probably for another tenant. That call from the lobby, that was from the taxi driver. He addressed you by name. All of this luggage is packed. Jamie Get is out of here! If you don't, I am going to use the phone and call the police and have you thrown out! Very well, Raymond. I'll leave. But on my way out, I will ask the taxi driver if he is waiting for a Mrs. Swift and son destined for the airport. And if he is, I can assure you, I'll call the police myself. No! Don't go! Geraldine, please look. I'm his mother. Don't you see how hard this is for me? He's my baby. Jamie, I don't want to lose my baby. Not a bad performance, Raven. Now you can stop all this nonsense and unpack these bags because you're not going anywhere. I'm dismissing that taxi. And then the three of us are going to sit down and wait right here until Logan arrives. to keep me prisoner like this, Geraldine, and I won't stand for it. My dear girl, you may leave any time you like. No one is stopping you. But if you do go, you go alone. Jamie is staying right here until his father arrives. You have no right to meddle in my affairs you like this. You should be thankful that I arrived when I did. 
I just saved you from making a very stupid mistake. Oh, yes, that sounds just like you, doesn't it? The big judge of what's right and what's wrong. Raven, it was Judge Lewis who decided what was right in the custody case. If you had taken this baby to London... Who I... said I was going to London? Oh, you have enough luggage packed here for a trip around the world. Don't try to fool me, Raven. I know exactly what you were trying to do. You thought you could circumvent the decision of the court by spiriting this baby out of the country. He is my son. I just want him, that's all. What's wrong with that? That would have been a criminal act. Just lucky for you that I caught you in time. Why is this happening to me? I feel like I'm living through some kind of a nightmare. Well, it was something you dreamed up all by yourself. I love my son. I love you, Jamie. I just want you with me all the time. You can see Jamie as often as you like. The visitation rights are very generous. As a matter of fact, more generous than they should be. Well, it's not enough. I want him with me all the time. I want to see him whenever I want to. Stop this. You never missed an opportunity to be away from this baby. Why, when you went to London the first time, you went without him. Now, surely you don't expect me to believe... That's you. not that true. Me. Why did I go through all of this stuff if I didn't love him? Oh, God, my head, I feel sick. Raven. Uh, these hysterics are completely unnecessary. I really do feel like I'm going to faint. Would you please get me a glass of water? Very well. the second time I've caught you trying to walk out with my son. Geraldine, what are you doing here, anyway? I came to find some aspirin, which I can certainly use. I'll tell you exactly what she's doing here. She thinks I'm going to run out with Jamie or some ridiculous thing like that. And just where were you going with Jamie? I was going downstairs to visit a neighbor, Mrs. Cross. She adores him. She babysits for him all the time. She's lying, Logan. Look at all this luggage. This is all Jamie's stuff. It's for you, and it's very nice luggage, so I expect it back, all right? Yeah, you have some nice pieces here. Ooh, it's nice lingerie, too. A little big for Jamie. All right, but... all right. So some of this is my stuff. I was going on a trip. Mm -hmm. You think I want to stay here when you take my baby away from me? Just where were you going? None of your business. London is lovely in the fall. Oh, isn't it? Will you just leave my house? You have no business to be here. Logan, she's quite right. There's no reason for me to be here now that you've arrived. I'll go back to the hotel and see if those things for Jamie have been delivered. Geraldine, thank you. Okay. Which of these cases have Jamie's things in them? So that's the way you want it, huh? You're just gonna take his stuff and take the kid and walk out of here like nothing happened. Well, I thought about bringing along a string quartet, a little background music, something sensitive. Logan, how can you joke at a time like this? Oh, Raven, this is pointless. I didn't come here to joke. I didn't come here to insult you. I just came to get my son. Please, don't do this. Do what? My whole life will be over if you take away my little baby. I won't have anything left. Now, I'm probably not going to have another baby. And you were certainly the only man I ever loved. Oh, Raven, cut it. It's up, true, you know it. I never loved Kevin Jameson. You know it as well as I do. You were the only man I ever loved. And me and Elliot Dorn and how many all others? All right, all right. I know I shouldn't have done that. And if I regret anything I've ever done, it's that. But you were so busy being district attorney, you never had time to be my husband. That's why I turned to Elliot. You know I have to have a man interested in me all the time. I can't live without that. First honest thing you've said today. I never really stopped loving you. And I probably never will. Come on, Jim. Give me one very, very precious thing, and in spite of everything else, I... I'll always be grateful for that. Come on, kid, we gotta get out of here. Well, I'll send for his things later, all right? <laughs> That's it. 
He's here with me, but I'll tell you one thing, he'd have been the darling of some stewardess right now if it hadn't been for Geraldine. Wait, you mean she was leaving the country again? Despite a court order? Thought she could get away with it. I guess she didn't mind being a fugitive. You know, I could see Raven doing that, just running away. Listen, I gotta go. I just called to tell you everything was fine, and thank you once again for all your help getting my son back. I really... <laughs> Where do you get the bail, boss? <laughs> see you later. Hello, Raven. This is Cliff Nelson, Logan Swift's attorney. I was hoping I'd never have to hear from you again, Cliff. Oh, I'll bet you were. I'll bet you'd like to arrange that, too, huh? Well, I just called to tell you that I'm aware of your travel plans. Where I go and what I do is none of your business. I just wanted to remind you that uh, in this state, even attempted kidnapping is a crime. I'd also appreciate it if you wouldn't leave town until I finish conducting the Elliot Dorn murder investigation. Bet you'd want to get far away from this town. You have got a very good reason to get out of town. This detective work is tough. I should remain a lawyer, huh? I'll tell you one thing, it's probably a lot safer. It got dark quick. Scott, Cliff Nelson speaking. Cliff, it's Mike. Oh, hi, Mike. How are you? I wanted to find out if you had a chance to uh, talk to that friend of yours with the AP. Yeah, uh, I heard from him. Well, did uh, his story of what happened uh, differ from uh, Kelly's version? Well, yeah, there were a couple points of difference. Uh, look, uh, could I talk to you this about this in the morning? Hmm? Okay. Uh, don't work too hard, Cliff. Uh, good night. Kelly, where are you? This raid, I won't call until 10 o'clock.
There you go. Nasty Bill. Hello. Uh, Mrs. Scott, I hope the telephone hasn't woken Julia. Julia's sound asleep, Molly. What is it? I'm... I'm, I'm still at Mr. Scott's office. I'm afraid. Well, are you having trouble finding the file? It should be there right on top of the desk. No. Oh, it's not that, Mrs. Scott. Something dreadful has happened Molly, here. Molly, what's wrong? Well, that... My partner, Mr. Scott's... The young man, Mr. Nelson. What happened to Cliff? Oh, well, he's been stabbed. <laughs> Dr. Lowry said it had something to do with the angle of penetration. Now, the knife blade was long enough to reach the heart, but the way it went in, you can see that it missed by considerable distance. Mm, yeah. Well, I'm sure the assailant meant the angle to be right. Somebody wanted Cliff Nelson dead. Yeah, I'd say that was the case. It's going to be all right, though, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Lowry said that he'd have nothing but soreness in the next couple of days. Oh, I went by to see him on the way over here. Oh? Did he have anything else to say? Well, he was a little too sedated to say much of anything. Kind of a goofy smile on his face. He's probably just glad he's alive. He's a very lucky man. Unlike Elliot Dorn. Why do you think these cases are connected? Well, I'm not saying they are, but they were both knife attacks and sneak attacks at that. Come on, how many gun assaults do we have on the records? Are they all connected? We can't discount the possibility of a connection, can we? No. No, we can't. We're not going to. This investigation is just beginning. At the same time, this Elliot Dorn investigation is getting us nowhere. I wouldn't say that. I think we have one viable suspect. Yeah, I and know. And as for Cliff Nelson, why, well, I think we'd be wise to check into his past cases when he was assistant DA. Wouldn't be surprised at all if somebody he sent up the river has just gotten out. Hmm. I wonder how many women he sent to prison. What makes you wonder that? Well, Cliff seems to think that his assailant was a woman. Then he does remember something else. Well, no, I'm not saying he remembered anything. He didn't hear or smell any perfume. But still, since the blow wasn't strong enough to kill... Well, wait a minute. You just told me it was the angle and not the strength. No, just the same. Do you have a theory of your own? Well, no, I'm not saying that I have a theory yet, but I do have a couple of questions. I'm sorry, but that stupid secretary of yours said you were busy. I have to talk to you, and right now. Even you cannot just barge into my office unannounced. Now, what do I have to do to keep you out? This is not a social call. It's police business. What Deborah Saxon and I do is police business. Yes, how come every time I come to this office, she's here? You mean when you force your way in here, don't you? It's instinct, darling. Self-preservation. I'm just protecting my interests. All right, Raven, that's it. Come on. Out of here. What are you going to do? Call a cop? He doesn't have to. I'm well trained in that sort of thing. You touch me and I'll sue you for police brutality. I am here about Cliff Nelson. What about Cliff Nelson? Do you know something, Ray? No, I don't know anything. That's what I came to find out. Well, he's all right. You want to visit him? He's in Monticello General. He's such a silly, harmless person. Who would want to kill him? It's like trying to kill Laurel and Hardy. We don't know the motive and we don't know the assailant. Which doesn't mean we don't have now, clues. Shut up. Clues what? What clues? Uh, I'm sorry that's classified information, Ray. Well, you can tell me. You can trust me. I was one of his best friends. You'll find out when we release it to the public. Oh, so you don't trust me. You're treating me like a civilian. It's exactly what you are. And civilians belong in my outer office. Wait a minute, Chief. Maybe Raven can help us if she was such a good friend of Cliff's. Hey, wait a minute. I have nothing to say. I only found out about this a half an hour ago. Yes, Helen. Are they still on the line? No, put them on hold. I need to talk to them myself. I'll be right in there. I'm needed the TCR. Okay, I was finished with my report anyway. And, Chief, I'll follow up on your suggestion about getting a list of indicted criminals. Please do that. And, Raven, I hope that's the last time you burst into my office unannounced. Well, now that the most interesting person in the room is gone, I think I'll leave, too. Just a minute. I have a couple of questions to ask you. Like what? When was the last time you saw Cliff? I don't have to answer that question. Was it the night he caught you in Elliot Dorn's office looking for your letter? No, it wasn't. It was at April and Draper's, and I was looking for a solid gold compact. Oh, and how'd you two get along? Beautifully, thank you. As a matter of fact, he saw me home. What are you getting at? Oh, God. First, you accuse me of murdering my mother. 
Then you accuse me of killing Elliot Dorn, and now this. Well, you look like you could kill me right now, Raven. Don't tempt me. I mean, it's just like I said to Derek. Who would want to hurt poor little Cliffy Nelson? Look, you know, I'm six foot two. I, I can take care of myself. If oh, you get... Cliff, come on. You're just a silly, harmless little guy. Well, you didn't think so when you were sneaking around the unicorn. Or, or what about in court? Or when I took you home from the Scots, huh? Well, all right. So you've done some silly things. But I still don't understand why someone would do this to you. Of course, you never know. <laughs> there are a lot of crazy people running around. Yeah. Sure are. Uh, you, look, Raven, they just gave me a sedative and I gotta fall asleep. Why don't you go now? Are you sure you don't know who did this? Uh, I mean, usually you're so perceptive. I'm perceiving that I'm falling asleep now. Look, you better go. Maybe it was someone who bears a grudge against you. Someone that you said something rather stupid to. Oh, no. Uh, People get offended, you know, Cliff. I mean, not everyone knows you the way I do. They take offense at things you say, like, for instance, when you said that you thought I killed Elliot Dorn. Did I say that? Yes. Yes, baby, you did. You said you thought I killed Elliot Dorn in cold blood. Look, you know, the doctor's starting to make rounds now. I, oh, come I, on, Cliff, don't do that. I, no, do don't, it, Cliff. Raven. Don't, you don't need oh, a nurse. Oh, oh. Now, I can help you. Oh, come Raven. on, Cliff, you, you, you've you get lost a lot of strength and you've just been through a shock and sometimes you have a delayed reaction. Now, you look uncomfortable. Your pillow is sort I'm of flat. I don't need any help, Why don't I get Raven? you another pillow? I don't need another pillow. Yes, you do. No, need I don't. Pillow. Raven. Raven, what are you doing? Raven! Raven!